While the world of exotic pets is vast and diverse, there is one category of animals that always seems to generate controversy, and those are the hybrid cats. Hybrid cats are specially bred felines that combine the genetics of a domesticated cat and a non-domesticated cat. They've been developed by cat fanciers to produce a special look and personality not found in a typical house cat. There are several types of hybrid cats, but by far the most common breeds are the Bengal cat, which is an Asian leopard cat cross, and the Savannah cat, which has the DNA of the African serval. Bengal cats have been extensively bred in captivity, have a stable temperament, and are recognized as purebred cats by the American Cat Fanciers Association and the International Cat Association. The large majority of Bengals are produced by breeding Bengals to each other instead of outcrossing with pure leopard cats. So, despite their distinct and unique personality that is often described as dog-like, there is little reason to not consider these felines to be a fully domestic breed of cat. But what about the Savannah Cat? As a fairly new development, there are still Savannah Cats produced with a higher percentage of genetics from their non-domesticated counterparts. To describe the number of generations away from the original outcross of a wild parent, hybrid animals are designated by the letter F and a number, with F1 being a 50-50 cross between the two species, F2 being the grand offspring, and so on. F4 hybrids and down are often said to make better pets than the higher content animals. F5 hybrids are often considered to be purebred and are legal in many more states. Recently, the influential pop star Justin Bieber has become embroiled in yet another public debate involving his pet keeping, which in the past included a hamster, a bulldog, and even a capuchin monkey. This time, the star has acquired two F1 Savannah cats. His posting of them on social media has sparked backlash from PETA, Big Cat Rescue, and animal welfare groups. These groups are critical of buying hybrids because they believe they are wild animals who make inherently bad pets and that cats shouldn't be purchased when there are domesticated cats in shelters. Many people also believe that due to their genetics, hybrid cats will be better or more prolific hunters. The Savannah Cat has been referred to as a living room leopard as people often associate non-domesticated felines as being more similar to each other. But servals are more closely related and much more similar to domesticated cats. Servals are not big cats like lions, tigers, and leopards, which are members of the genus Panthera. It's most important to realize, however, that what makes animals like tigers and lions so dangerous to humans has little to do with their disposition or any so-called wild behaviors and everything to do with their size. Servals are not leopards, in size, temperament, or their dietary preferences. Nor is there any evidence that they hunt more often or more efficiently than all domesticated cats. In fact, there have been many reports of house cats being prolific surplus killers even when fed, which is uncommon behavior in most wild animals. While a serval, being a larger medium-sized cat, may take the occasional small or baby antelope. Their diet consists of mostly small rodents and insects, just like domesticated cats. There are no known incidences of a serval causing a fatality to human beings, and even severe injuries are uncommon. Therefore, the designation of these cats as wild animals tells us little about their disposition as pets. So what are those so-called wild traits that animal rights groups are apparently so concerned about? One common complaint is that these cats tend to bond to one person and may behave defensively towards strangers. This can also make vet visits difficult and require that they are sedated for examinations. Savannah cats, like non-domesticated cats, may be prone to urine spraying and have problems using their litter box. These cats are also frequently reported to be energetic and have high exercise demands. Often described as dog-like, Cat running wheels were developed due to the energy level of the Bengal cat breed, and walking hybrids on leashes or building them outdoor enclosures is often recommended. However, domesticated cats can benefit tremendously from similar care standards, and many house cats have succumbed to health and psychological problems from traditional cat care. Aggression is probably the behavior that most people associate with wildness, 
and critics of hybrid cats even claim that they are dangerous. In actuality, it is common for true wild animals to avoid conflict with humans, for confronting and fighting something that is much larger than them may lead to injuries that will render the animal unable to survive in the wild. Small wild cats would likely never have any interest in fighting a human unless they felt they were trapped and had no other alternative. Most cases of small wild cats attacking humans are due to rabies or some other neurological disease that alters behavior. Given this, it is more logical to hypothesize that human aggression in hybrid cats is not due to their so-called wild genes, but their domesticated genes. There have been many reported incidences of domesticated cats fighting their owners, trapping them in bathrooms, and attacking leashed dogs, all behavior that is highly unlikely to occur with a true wild living feline. To call hybrid cats wild animals based on a behavior that is uncharacteristic of wild animals doesn't really make sense. In addition, pet hybrid cats are socialized with humans and will have very different behavior from wild servals, Asian leopard cats, and other cats that live in the wild. Given this information, it makes sense not to consider these hybrids to be wild animals, rather they are cats with various percentages of non-domesticated genetics, and these early generation hybridizations can sometimes result in an unstable temperament or potential unpredictable issues that an owner must be willing and ready to adapt to. There is little doubt that the higher generations of hybrid cats will make challenging pets for mainstream pet owners who expect the behavior of a typical domesticated house cat. But the question is, are their needs impossible to meet and are they too difficult to live with for everyone? Animal rights groups will categorically state yes and point to surrenders of these animals as evidence. But the fact is, even regular domesticated cats are routinely surrendered to shelters with behavioral problems being cited as one of the reasons prompting the surrender. It only makes logical sense, given that there are cases of all pets being surrendered to shelters due to the owner doing insufficient research or being ill-prepared to care for that particular pet that exotic pets and hybrid cats can be prone to the same circumstances. Also like regular cats, individual hybrid cats can have severe behavioral problems that can be a challenge. These issues arise so often in domesticated cats that there are TV shows dedicated to the subject. There are even rescue groups dedicated to rehoming these animals, just as there are for regular cats, so that the appropriate homes can be located which contradicts the claim that it is nearly impossible to rehome hybrid cats. According to Bridget Cowell, the co-national coordinator of Savannah Rescue, not only do we rarely find savannas in rescues or surrender to shelters, but even more rarely are these Savannah F1s. We have a very long waiting list of people wanting rescued savannas, and they would love it if we could supply some early generation savannas, but we disappoint them year after year. While hybrid cats do not suit most cat owners, there are plenty of people who love the challenges of owning them. And luckily, high content animals are extremely expensive and are not often casually purchased. Despite the protests of many, the demand for hybrid cats continues to persist. It would perhaps be a better option to let owners know what they potentially are getting into instead of generalizing them with misleading, biased claims and fear mongering. This way, we can discourage people who are ill-suited for hybrid ownership while promoting responsible ownership.